Lena, I find myself on familiar, yet disturbing, unfamiliar territory today as we appear here in your court. I will do my very best to remain ethical, politically correct, as I address this court, the defendant, his counsel, in this extremely emotionally charged issue. May I address the defendant? Inmate, sir. Inmate Nasser. Inmate Nasser. That is what your name is. And don't you forget that. The media outlets that have so intently covered this hearing need to know your name. Your name is not Dr. Nasser. It is not Mr. Nasser. It is not Larry. It's inmate. Inmate 21504-040. For your eternal life. As a law enforcement correctional professional for over 32 years, I speak for myself and my personal feelings that you do not deserve to be educated regarding your future. You do not deserve to be educated on the how to's, how to fly a kite to a correctional officer to ask for a doctor how to fly a kite, to ask how to fill out an inmate form, how to fly a kite, to ask how you use the inmate telephone system. You do not deserve the wins. When will those blue clothes you have on your back be washed? When will those whites that are limited in your possession be laundered? When will your blankets be laundered? You do not deserve that. The wares within those facilities and the watch out fours. You do not deserve to be educated in that. <coughs> As you are forever escorted from wall to wall. Because as we have all seen and you have proven, you did not care to extend that courtesy or compassion to anyone. Yet you simply benefited from your pathetic, narcissistic, psychopathic agenda. <clears throat> However, I will educate you on some prison argots, language terms that you might want to understand. As documented in a correctional textbook that I've used for lectures, written by Ph.D. Frank Schmelinger and Ph.D. Schmelinger, you want me to spell it? S-C-H-M-A-L-L-E-G-E-R and Ph.D. John Smykla, S-M-Y-K-L-A. You will want to come familiar with these terms. Fish. Chester. Diaper sniper, diddler, tree jumper, just to list a few. I hope these argots are offensive to you because you are offensive to us. However, in my world and in my family's world that you have so conveniently destroyed, you are a fucking hog. A hog. And may Nasser, I pray, and I'm sure this goes against several opinion in this room, but I pray that these county, state, and federal correctional staff that you will forever come in contact with perform their jobs to the best of their abilities to keep you alive. And don't you dare try to manipulate the correctional facility and be a coward and harm yourself. <coughs> alive so you can live in fear as you had inflicted fear, guilt and pain on these young women and families. 
fear the demons from the dark as we have done. Fear that you wake soaked in the night with sweat from the nightmares as I and my family have done. Fear for the safety, sanity of your children, wife, and family as I and my family have done. I want you to fear the pain of the futuristic death notifications that are certain to come your way as you remain locked within the walls, unable to hold and console your family. I want you to fear those dark corners, unimaginable correctional corridors. I want you to fear that booty bandit that wants to make you as punk. I want you to fear and cry and no one to listen. I want you to remain alive for your eternal life inside those walls. I read a quote a few weeks back, searching the internet for inspiring quotes and sayings, just trying to help my girls place some sort of existence in daily life during all this darkness and nights. And this quote resonates in my mind as I am a woodworker for therapeutic reasons. And I paraphrase, you inmate Nasser are like a piece of sandpaper in a woodworker's shop. You scratch, you dig, and you will change the exterior. And in this case, the enthusiasm, the internal minds, the trust and the dignity of so many. But in the end, those scratched and dug will become polished and beautiful. And beautiful, strong women they are, and they have rocked your world. And you, inmate Nasser, will be discarded and thrown into the garbage like the garbage you are. Judge Aquilina. As we approach the close of these four daunting days of emotionally charged statements, I applaud you. We applaud you. This room applauds you. <clears throat> your candor, your demeanor, your willingness, willingness and understanding to listen to so many horrific stories. I encourage you to impose the maximum sentence upon inmate Nasser, recommended by attorney Povolitis and her team. I, we, eagerly wait for the closure of this hearing to hear your voice. Thank you. Sir, thank you so much. You have the depth and knowledge that other parents don't. And I know that your words were more than heartfelt. I know that what you've gone through and every parent has gone through is very sickening, but because you know the legal system so much, I know there's a special hurting place in you. And I hear that in your words. And I'm hoping that today, coming here, will also help you heal. And you are also a survivor with that voice. And your voice has also helped to shape now, in the future, others, and to rock defendant's world. I have heard you. No thanks needed with me. I know this seems unusual, and it is unusual because of so many victims, but I do this every day with all victims. I'm not specially selecting this. I know you all keep honoring me that way, and I'm humbled, but it's really not necessary. You did your job out on the streets. That's more than what I've ever done. Thank you, sir. Thank you to your beautiful daughter. You're quite a team. Thank you. Thank you.